Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for standing by for Bowson's first quarter 2024 earnings conference call. At this time, all participants are in the listen-only mode. After management's prepared remarks, there will be a question and answer session. As a reminder, today's conference call is being recorded. I will now turn the meeting over to your host for today's call, Ms. Wendy Sun, Senior Director of Corporate Development and Investor Relations of Baozun. Please proceed, Wendy. Thank you, Operator. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Our first quarter 2024 earnings release was distributed earlier before this call and is available on our IR website at ir.bowson.com as well as on PR Newswire services. We have also posted a PowerPoint presentation that accompanies our comments to the same IR website which, uh, where they are available for download. On the call today from Bowson, we have Mr. Vincent Chu. Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Catherine Zhu, Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Arthur Yu, President of Thousand E-Commerce, and Ms. Sanjay Zabit, President of Thousand Brand Management. Ms. Chu will review the business strategy and company highlights, followed by Ms. Zhu, who will discuss our financials and outlook, and then by Ms. Yu and Ms. Zabit to share more regarding our e-commerce and brand management segment, respectively. They will all be available to answer your questions during the Q&A session that follows. Before we begin, I would like to remind you that this conference call contains forward-looking statements within the meaning of the U.S. Security Act of 1933 as a mandate, the U.S. Security Exchange Act of 1934 as a mandate, and the U.S. Private Security Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These forward-looking statements are based upon management current expectations and current market and operating conditions and relates to events that involve no or unknown no risk, uncertainties, and other factors, all of which are difficult to predict and many of which are beyond the company's control, which may cause the company's actual results to differ materially from those in the forward-looking statement. Further information regarding these and other risks, uncertainties, or factors is included in the company's filing with the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission and its announcement, notice, and other documents published on the website of the Stock Exchange of Hong Kong Limited. All information provided in this call is as of the date hereof and based upon assumptions that the company believes to be reasonable as of this date and the company does not undertake any obligation to update any forward-looking statements except as required and the applicable the law. Finally, please note that, unless otherwise stated, all figures mentioned during this conference call are in RMB. In addition, we may elect to use adjusted in place of non-general uh, accepted accounting principles or non-GAAP in order to reduce all the confusions then arise from our discussion about financials related to the GAP grant. It is now my pleasure to introduce our Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, Ms. Vincent Chu. Vincent, please go ahead. Thank you, Wendy. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for your time. As you may recall, our primary focus for 2024 is to continue executing our plans diligently and sustainably. I'm pleased to share the progress and the results of our ongoing transformation journey. Please turn to slide number three. In the first quarter of 2024, Bowdoin Group achieved a 5% year-over-year revenue growth, reaching $2 billion. This growth was primarily driven by BBM's 66% year-over-year revenue increase and a better top-line momentum from BEC. Additionally, our operating cash flow improved by 129 million, reflecting the robustness of our business model and operational efficiency. A closer look at the top-line enables for the quarter. For BEC, 
It's encouraging that the service revenue returned to growth after six quarters of year-over-year -year contraction. This is attributed to our consistent efforts in enhancing client satisfaction, building our omni-channel capabilities, and extending our value proposition to our brand partners. In addition, we introduced a high-quality product sales model by entering into exclusive distribution collaborations with several brands. This exclusivity allows us to make full use of our digitalization capabilities and the retail expertise to enable brands to build a consistent go-to-market strategy, which is comprehensive and covers product positioning, marketing, pricing, channels, and the customer's experience. Along with daily sales operations, with deeper involvement and alignment in strategy and merchandising tactics, we are confident to help brands increase sales and boost their brand equity. We are confident this model will enable BEC product sales to resume growth next quarter and gradually improve BEC's overall margin. BBM continues to make headway in transforming Gap China. Focusing on China for China products and merchandising tactics that resonate with local customers. BBM delivered solid Q1 results in both top and the bottom lines. These efforts have had positive market acceptance and increased GAP's growth potential for the second half of 2024. Lastly, we are proud to share another significant milestone in our technology advancement. Our Technology Innovation Center, TIC, successfully deployed over 5,000 partner offline stores for a global electronic brand giant. This involved a full set of demand chain management solutions that manages online DTC, offline retail, and a partner distribution network with up-to-date digital commerce capabilities. It is fully integrated with the Baozun digital operating platform to ensure a seamless and closed-loop omni-channel digital e-commerce, digital commerce experience. These are highlights that reflect the solid and constant effort uh, Baozun team has put into effect our ongoing transformation. I'm also proud to welcome Catherine Zhu, our newly appointed CFO, to this call. Catherine brings a wealth of experience and expertise to our senior management team. Importantly, Catherine is no stranger to Belgium, as she was, has worked with us for the past four years in various key functions. With Catherine taking on the CFO role, Arthur is now more dedicated to leading our BEC segment to accelerate its transformation and further growth in 2024. Let me now pass the call over to Catherine for a review of our financials. Thanks, Vincent, and hello, everyone. I'm pleased to speak with you today in my new capacity as Bolton Group CFO. As Vincent just mentioned, advancing our business transformation initiatives and driving growth are our top priorities for 2024. Accordingly, my primary objective will be to align our financial strategies with our broad business goals, facilitating both our transformation and progress through fiscal discipline and cost optimization. Now let me share with you our first quarter 2024 financial results in more detail. Please turn to slide number three. Baozun Group's total net revenues increased by 5% year-over-year to $2 billion. Of this, e-commerce revenue contributed $1.7 billion, while revenue from the brand management segment increased to $330 million. Breaking down the e-commerce revenue by business model, services revenue increased by 4% to $1.2 billion during the quarter. This increase was primarily attributable to double-digit year-over-year growth in revenue from sportswear store operations, as well as digital marketing and IT solutions. 
BC product sales revenue decreased by 17% to $395 million as we optimized certain product portfolios and pursued a high-quality distribution model. For instance, we proactively optimized our approach to several brands in fast-moving consumer goods over the past few quarters, which led to a 51% year-over-year decline in this category. Please turn to slide number four. From a profitability perspective, our gross margin for product sales in e-commerce improved by 230 basis points to 13.8% during the quarter. Gross margin for BBM remained healthy at 53%, and our group blended gross margin for product sales totaled 31%, an increase of 700 basis points year over year. This was driven by improved gross margin of BEC product sales, as well as a higher contribution percentage from BBM revenues. Now to bottom line items. Please turn to slide number five. Our total operating expenses for the quarter were 1.6 billion, an increase of 7.9% year over year. This increase was mainly due to additional sales and marketing spending in both VEC and the BBM segments, which was in line with the increase in our digital marketing revenues and the new product launch, respectively. During the quarter, our adjusted loss from operations totaled 18 million. This comprised an adjusted operating profit of 12 million from the e-commerce segment and a BBM operating loss of 29 million. It is worth noting that BBM continued to show good momentum in reducing its operating loss, with the 29 million operating loss covering the month this quarter, compared to 35 million for the two-month period 2023. Turning to cash items on slide number six, we improved our operating cash flow by 129 million, where we had a cash outflow of 208 million in the first quarter last year. The corresponding outflow in the first quarter this year has been reduced to 79 million. This was attributed to our effective and targeted cash flow management strategy. Notably, the operating cash flow for e-commerce segment in the first quarter turned positive for the first time since 2019. Also, with better utilization of financial capital and resources, our net interest income increased over 30% to 9 million. As of March 31st, 2024, we maintained a continuous steady balance in cash and cash equivalents, restricted cash and short-term investments, totaling 2.9 billion. In January 2024, our board approved a new share repurchase pro program of 20 million US dollars over the next 12 months. I'm pleased to report that in April, the company repurchased approximately 845,000 ADS with 2.1 million US dollars through the open market on this program, reflecting our confidence in the company. Lastly, on slide number seven, we have been successful in promoting ESG and integrating sustainability into our core business operations. We prioritize energy efficiency and waste minimization in our warehouse and logistics parks. Moreover, we advocate for sustainable lifestyles among our employees, brand partners, consumers, and other stakeholders, fostering a green e-commerce ecosystem. Thanks to this unwavering commitment, we reduced our 2023 carbon emissions by 28% compared to our 2021 benchmark. I'm also proud to share that CDP raised our ESG rating from C to B this year, a powerful testament to our sustainability efforts. Thank you for your attention. Let me now pass the call over to Arthur to update you on BEC, our e-commerce business. Um, thanks, Vincent and Catherine. And hello, everyone. Now let's take a look at the BEC business in quarter one of 2024. Please turn to slide number eight. The year of 2024 has started off with many challenges and opportunities for the BEC business. Our strategic goal is to drive customer-centric, high-quality, and sustainable business growth. And we plan to deliver this goal through three key strategic enablers. Number one, 
enhancing customer satisfaction. Number two, building a high quality product sales business. And number three, expanding into new business areas by utilizing our core capabilities. In the first quarter of 2024, we have made solid progress in each area. Our first strategic enabler focuses on improving service quality to further enhance client satisfaction. Since 2021, we have collaborated with Nielsen to build an NPS uh, Net Promoter Score system to systematically gather feedback from our clients. Over the past two years, we have seen an increase in our overall NPS, and the score has improved from 8.07 to 8.23. And this indicates that an increasing number of clients are now willing to recommend our services, likely leading to organic growth through positive word of mouth. The improvement in our NPS score is largely due to our consistent efforts in maintaining high standards in delivering services, particularly our comprehensive digital commerce capabilities across multi-categories, channels, and the entire value chain. In quarter one, we continued to perform strongly and gained market share in key categories such as apparel, sports and outdoor, and travel and hotel. Our omni-channel capability is one of Baldwin's core advantages and a focus for development in 2024. During the quarter, we not only continued to open stores on the traditional marketplace platforms such as Timo, JD, and VIP.com, but also opened over 20 new stores on emerging platforms like Douyin, Poison, and Red helping brands generate revenue through these new channels. Additionally, we are continuously expanding our value chain and innovating our service models. We have become the e-commerce logistics service partner for multi-brands and the VIS corporation, helping them customize automated e-commerce order fulfillment centers supporting nationwide multi-warehouse shipping, and improving logistics service capabilities. We have also formed a strategic alliance with China Resource Vanguard to explore new retail models, leveraging our long-term cooperation experience with Walmart. Based on our outstanding performance, we received multiple service provider awards in quarter one. And this includes Tmall's six-star service provider, JD.com's Jin Zhuoyue Award, Tencent's Smart Retail iNew Service Provider, and Douyin's 2023 High Potential Luxury Service Provider Award. These awards validate our progress in all mini channel capabilities and continue to give us strategic advantages over our competitors. Our second strategic enabler is to build a high quality product sales business, which we address by focusing on two aspects, optimizing existing distribution business and introducing high quality distribution partnerships. For existing distribution businesses, we have nearly completed the optimization of financially underperforming operations this quarter. At the same time, we have enhanced our governance and talent management by establishing a distribution business committee to ensure the quality of the business continues to improve in the future. To introduce new high quality product sales businesses, we continue to expand using an exclusive distribution model for medium-sized global brands. In quarter one, 
we initiated several collaborations in lifestyle and small appliance categories. In February, we become the exclusive distribution partner for the Canadian fashion brand Aldo and are currently working on repositioning the brand in the Chinese market. We also initiated an exclusive distribution collaboration with the renewed American high-end home appliance brand, b -Cell. We are also working with Nuke, a French cosmetic and beauty brand, as the exclusive distributor for its China launch with comprehensive online and offline growth plans. Compared to traditional distributors, Baldwin poses digital enabled distribution capabilities, efficiently integrating online and offline operations and leveraging digital technologies to drive omni-channel business growth. The third enabler is expanding into new business areas by creating new um, uh, and creating new business models by utilizing Bolton's core capability in data and technology. For instance, we have deployed our technology to help brand partners advance distributor digital transformation and enhance comprehensive omnichannel retail capabilities. We have also extended our customer service from a client-by-client -client basis to service cooperation with e-commerce platforms. Additionally, our self-incubated brand continues to achieve high double-digit sales growth in quarter one, transitioning from initial incubation to rapid expansion. While growing the, uh, the top line is our priority this year, protecting the bottom line is also important to us. We are actively promoting lean projects within BEC to further reduce costs. Additionally, we are extending the use of AIGC tools to more employees and business scenarios to enhance operational efficiency. In summary, we achieved solid results in quarter one and are on track with our annual plan. Our goal for BEC is to become the preferred digital commerce partner for our global clients. To achieve this goal, we will continue to focus on our strategic enablers, ensuring robust business growth while further enhancing our digital and omnichannel capabilities. We will share more progress with you in the future. Now let me pass on to Sandrine for an update on BBM. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, team. And thank you all. It is my great pleasure to speak with you. Please turn to slide number nine. We are pleased to report top-line growth and continuous bottom-line improvements for BBM in the first quarter of 2024. While there is a timing impact, as we had two months in reporting in the same period of last year versus the full quarter this time for the 66 revenue growth percent, we achieved strong sales during the Chinese New Year period, supported by a series of new product releases, targeted promotions, and effective marketing campaigns. Leveraging on our efforts in strategic pricing, supply chain, and inventory management, we continue to maintain effective discount control while achieving healthy inventory turnover improvements. During the quarter, the gross margin for BBM remained healthy at 53% post royalties, and our inventory turnover days improved by 20 days to 140 compared to the same period last year. We further improve operational efficiency, reducing our operating loss to 29 million for this quarter, which covers three months compared to 35 million over two months last year. Our China for China strategy continues to evolve with promising developments. We are introducing specialized products 
tailored to specific targets, audiences, and channels, ensuring that our offerings meet local consumer needs and preferences. For example, we recently intensified our efforts for segmented products in the kids and baby and women's wear categories. We noted a significant rebound in our kids and baby stores, marked by improvements in customer awareness and a distinctive brand image, which solidified a positive brand perception. In our current demographic, the combination of kids and baby and women's wear accounts for less than 50% of sales, presenting opportunities for further growth. To capitalize on this momentum, we are strategically rolling out new children's wear stores and we will continue to launch segmented product offerings throughout the year to better meet the needs of our targeted demographic. We are also introducing new women designers and further enhancing product quality to better cater to the young mom generation. Additionally, our functional product segments, such as UV jackets and cooling products, are performing well and are expected to gain further traction as we move into the warmer months. Our collaboration with selected IPs, such as 8 .8 and Palace, resonated well with our target audience. Along with our social media campaigns on Weibo and Little Red Book, our brand visibility has been significantly boosted. While there has been some traffic contraction in the fashion apparel segment in recent months, the new stores we opened during this period still demonstrated higher productivity levels. Leveraging on our proven new opening philosophy, we plan to expand our physical presence throughout the rest of 2024 to offset the organic decrease in our store count over the past few quarters. We're happy to have gained strong market acceptance from the industry community, including potential IP collaborations, landlords, and potential franchisee partners. With this established ecosystem and partnerships, we are encouraged by the positive momentum in brand equity. We plan to open up to new five stores in the second quarter of 2024 while focusing on optimizing store performance and enhancing the customer experience. Additionally, we will leverage a rapid deployment strategy by opening pop-up shops in strategic locations to gauge consumer interest and test market viability. By executing these initiatives simultaneously, we aim to strengthen our presence, tap into new markets, and capitalize on emerging growth opportunities. Looking ahead to the rest of 2024, we are exercising caution due to the observed slower recovery in consumption sentiments. While it may take more time for this sentiment to improve, we remain committed to executing our strategic plan and driving BBM top-line growth in 2024. That concludes our prepared remarks. Thank you. Operator, we are now ready to begin the Q&A session. Thank you. Certainly. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then 1 on your touchtone phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star then 2. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. If you would like to state your question in Chinese, you may do so. But then, please also restate your question in English. The first question comes from Alisa Yap with Citigroup. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, good evening, management. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, congrats on the solid quarter. Uh, I have uh, two questions first. 
Um, so I think during first quarter, um, based on the MBS data, there seems to be faster growth pace of the online shopping with the deeper online penetration rate in expense on some of the offline retail, um, maybe given the aggressive pricing discount from the online marketplace. So just wondering um, how about you view this trend uh, as your opportunity? Uh, and then on the other hand, uh, wondering if um, you know the gap offline store are seeing uh, some of the demand actually shifting to the online purchase um, as you know we see for the general broad market trend um, second question is um, related to gap um, just wondering if management can provide an update on the overall growth rate target for this year uh, and also um, you know any of the uh, update on the performance of the newly acquired brands like the Hunter. Thank you. Uh, hi, Alicia. It's Arthur here. Thank you for the question. I will take the first uh, part of your question, uh, and then I will hand over to Sandrine for the gap-related question. Um, I think you are uh, right in terms of uh, the online penetration uh, seems to uh, increase uh, but not necessarily at the expense of offline retail, because from our observation, some successful brands have started to adapt the omni-channel strategy by, fu uh, by fully utilizing the different customer base from each of the platform. Some brands even uh, try to develop uh, some unique product for some special online platform, try to utilizing their consumer base and that leads to a higher penetration for the online, but not necessarily at the expense of cannibalization of the, off, uh, of the offline market. So that's number one. The second thing we have seen is uh, from some successful brands, what they do is online merging offline, i.e. OIMO strategy, trying to utilize uh, and use the technology and data uh, to create a solution to integrate the online and offline shopping scenario. And that is actually helping to generate organic uh, traffic into both online and offline to drive the incremental sales. So that's our observation uh, for, uh, for your first part of the question. Sandri? Yeah, uh, thank you, Arthur, and thank you, Alisa, for your, for your question. So um, first, um, you, you asked if uh, this was something we were observing also this uh, potential shift uh, for gap. In fact, it is true that we see overall that the uh, traffic offline uh, is uh, decreasing um, and, um, and it's decreasing faster than the traffic online. Um, having said this, as, um, as uh, Arthur mentioned, it doesn't mean uh, any form of uh, cannibalization. Now, um, concerning your second question, about the uh, growth perspective for all of 2024 for, for GAP. We, uh, we still plan BBM to have and, and GAP to have double digit growth uh, for the whole year. Um, partly uh, because we see the new stores that we are opening performing uh, actually better than the existing portfolio. And also partly because we plan to uh, continue our store opening with a, a little bit more than uh, more than 50 stores to be open in the rest of the year, uh, or in the total year, I should say, because we already opened two uh, in Q1, and we will have five open in Q2 and the rest in Q3 and 4. So um, now the, the last part of your question was about uh, Hunter. And I'm, uh, I'm pleased to say that Hunter is uh, very well on track, both in terms of sales and uh, operating results. Okay, thank you That's so much. I'll get back to the queue. Okay. Thank you. The next question comes from Colin Chen with Citic Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, management. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I have two questions. Uh, the first is about uh, BEC. Um, in this year, most e-commerce platforms keep emphasizing on um, price competition strat uh, power. 
and as a brand partner, how does Bolton balance brand's pricing system and pricing competitiveness? And my second question is about BBM. And uh, also in this year, uh, did the management find that there are different consumption trends and characteristics between GAP's online and offline performance? And what is your future layout of GAP's offline and on online business? For example, will there be like different product lines or pricing strategy between online and offline? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Colin. I will take the BEC part and then Sandrine can comment on the BBM. Um, I think you are right. The, uh, the e-commerce platform are more and more uh, putting emphasis on the price um, kind of um, the competitiveness. But at the same time, that's not the only tool a brand has to enhance uh, their brand positioning. So for example, a lot of our clients spend uh, money and effort to build the brand awareness, increasing the brand equity in order to protect their pricing structure. And some of our clients are even follow a full price strategy with very limited discount. Uh, that actually drives a better uh, model for the brand to have a sustainable growth because they can use the additional margin to support the brand building in the longer term. And that's our, uh, uh, um, a lot of our advice to our brand partner to balance the short term and long term. So that's the first one. Secondly, uh, we see many brands are focused on the new product introduction, which is a key to keep the freshness of a brand appearance to the consumer. As you know, the Chinese consumer is um, uh, very uh, looking forward to the new things coming up. So with that, uh, a lot of brands is trying to capture the new trend uh, of the consumer. Um, and also, the marketing is becoming more dynamic, uh, including the short video, the live streaming, uh, a lot of the digital format uh, a type of marketing. It starts to building uh, a different uh, kind of uh, the way the brand are promoting themselves. With that, all in all, I think the price is one of the tools to drive the brand forward uh, for the sales. But to balance uh, the longer term and short term, uh, how to build a brand is also important. Sandri? Thank you, Arthur, and thank you, Colin. So to um, answer your question, yes, there are different consumption trends uh, online and offline that we also observe with, uh, with GAP. Uh, as we said uh, uh, earlier, generally speaking, we, we see a lot of uh, caution from consumers who do not, um, who do not spend lavishly. Uh, and uh, this translates differently online and offline. I would say that in both cases, to some extent, it's value for money. But offline, we have more of a focus on value, and online, more of a focus on money. Um, so what we can see is that, generally speaking, uh, the average price, the uh, UPT, the margin is, is higher offline than online, but the frequency of purchase is probably more cautious than it used to be. Um, so people are looking for very high-quality products, and they are looking for what they see as value in the products we offer offline. Versus online, we see a trend towards obviously uh, more looking for good price and good deals. And this has uh, led us to increase the proportion of special online products um, for the online part of our business in order to maintain our top line without, um, uh, without letting go on the uh, control of discounts. So overall, we manage with this to have lower ticket price for consumers online, but uh, keep our good margin. I think this covers uh, the, the, the question of Colin on BBM. Thank you, Arthur and Sandrine, for answers. I have no other questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Van Gale from CICC. Please go ahead. 
Hi, thanks management for taking my question. Um, my question is about brand management business. Uh, could you please share the sales performance of Gap recently, especially during the shopping festival? Uh, also, for the overall brand management business, are there plans to incorporate more brands this year? Thank you. As we, uh, uh, sorry, yeah, thank you for, for your question. So, um, as we said, we see um, we had a very good performance uh, during Chinese New Year. The rest of the quarter has been uh, slower, with uh, increasing caution from, um, from consumers, which we see particularly in the offline part of our business. Um, as I was trying to explain earlier, there is um, a higher caution that leads consumers to look for value in in the what in what they purchase and uh, the second part of your question was sorry i missed uh, i missed it um what was the second part of your question yeah yeah, yeah. Hmm? my second question is about the, are there any plans to include oh yeah yeah, yeah. okay uh, it, yeah. Yes, I understand. Uh, we are being, uh, we, we obviously uh, look at many, many brands. Um, I cannot guarantee that there will be new brands incorporated this year because we are exercising uh, extreme caution in the way we select the brands, uh, both in terms of which uh, segment they belong to, which category they belong to, and our analysis on their potential in China particularly in this uh, period of relatively low consumption sentiment. Yeah, some more words Thank to you. say. This is for, uh, Vincent. Um, for, for the potential new brands, actually, right now we have, a, we have a, a quite strong pipeline for both BEC and BBM business. And also, um, right now we have a lot of different ways to work with uh, a new brand. Uh, we can uh, work with a brand for the you know pure e-commerce service, or we can take some uh, exclusivity on distribution uh, distributorship, and we can also do some M and A or license. So we have a lot of different ways working with them. So, but talking about the M and A, we'll be uh, very uh, selective and careful, just like uh, what uh, Sandrine just mentioned. Yeah, but right now we have uh, a lot of different ways working with them. So that, that is a key message. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from Sophie Wong with CNBI. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, well, my question is about the live streaming commerce update. Uh, after our acquisition of Hangzhou location and our investment encounter, is there any big change on brand engagement or journey performers? And then any positive change or challenges you can share? Uh, in the long run, how do you think about the revenue or journey scale from live stream e-commerce? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sophie. Um, I think, first of all, our integration with uh, Hangzhou location is well on track. And with the capability of location, plus the client relationship and pools uh, from Belgium, we have already win a, a number of new deals. And the teams are very busy every day, working until midnight in order to fulfill the new deals. So that's a good sign. Um, our goal to, uh, um, uh, to acquire the location is focused on building our omni-channel capability. So that said, with the overall trend, France is moving into omni channel. Both the traditional e-commerce channel like TMO and JD are important, but also the new live streaming channel uh, like um, uh, Douyin and Little Red Book and Kuaishou are becoming more and more important. So the acquisition of location gave us that capability to uh, make sure we can offer that one-stop solution to, uh, to our brand partners. In terms of the GMV performance, if we look at the live streaming related uh, GMV we generate, we actually have a high double-digit growth for this year. But the overall size uh, is 
a small um, it's um, still a small proportion within the overall GMV. But we can see uh, that not the quantity what we are looking for is the quality of our service and the breadth of our offering which makes Baldwin different. And that's the reason why we put a lot of investment uh, and effort on building uh, the location business into uh, the wider Baldwin uh, ecosystem. Yeah. Okay, very clear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may please press star then one on your touch one phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, you may press star then two. The next question comes from Thomas Chong with Jeffries. Please go ahead. Um, thanks, management. Um, thanks for taking my question. I have two questions. Um, the first one is, um, could management share some recent consumer sentiment and expectation outlook for different categories like apparel, FMCG, electronics? And my second question is, could management share some color on the 618 Shopping Festival, um, the consumer assessment for BEC. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for the question. Um, consumer confidence um, is still not recovered to the pre-COVID uh, level. Uh, we tracked the consumer confidence index, and so far in the first uh, three to four months of this year, it's constantly below 90 mark. And that number before COVID is above 110 which means the consumer confidence has still not recovered. Uh, but on the other hand, we see uh, the trend of um, uh, some of uh, the categories are doing pretty well. So for example, in apparel, we see the sports and outdoor, those two, uh, two categories are doing pretty well. And uh, in the luxury, we have seen the jewelry is doing pretty well, and also the JD platform is doing uh, better on luxury than Timo. Uh, for FMCG and consumer electronics, it's a mix. Uh, we see some uh, brands are doing well and some are not doing that well. Uh, the ones doing well all have some good new product introduction. And also the local brands are doing, uh, are performing better than the global brands uh, in general. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Alisa Yap with Fidi Group. Please go ahead. Um, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my uh, follow-up questions. I have two quick follow-up questions. Uh, one is that I noticed the uh, um, digital marketing and IT solution revenue actually grew quite well um, on the year-over-year -year basis um, this quarter. Is that mainly due to low base or is it contributed by newly added brands or is that because of the strong demand in general? And then second mm -hmm. question um, on the within the online stores revenue, uh, the luxury category on the year-over-year -year basis, it looks a little bit weaker. So just wondering, is that within your expectation or do you think that could be driven by some of the con consumption shift away from luxury? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, the first one, the digital marketing and IT, uh, is not related to the low base. So that's to start with. Um, what we have seen is uh, the online traffic is becoming more and more uh, um, it's becoming more and more expensive, and um, the different ways of doing advertising online is becoming more and more complex. Therefore, brands need to increase the investment to generate the same traffic uh, compared with the past. So that um, requires brands to invest more in the digital marketing. And also, the content is becoming more important. So many of our brands are willing to invest on content to drive a better uh, customer uh, kind of 
uh, the conversation from an online perspective. And some of the content, uh, the brands are using China for China strategy. So for example, in the past, some of the content are being made in Europe and in the US at headquarter. Now, increasingly, we Baldwin offering high quality live streaming center in Shanghai. We are actually, uh, we are actually managed to acquire those business, uh, which used to be done in the headquarter. So those are the, on the digital marketing. On IT, it's more, uh, our IT capability is helping the brand to increase the long-term uh, capability. And with the top-line growth slow down from the brand, the brand are spending money on transforming their internal processes and system. And the digital is becoming a key for most of our clients. So that's why they start to spend more on IT. So those are on, the, uh, on digital marketing and IT. Uh, in relation to your question on luxury, um, I think it's a mixed result uh, for the luxury brand. Um, overall, the uh, sector uh, is, is, um, is uh, um, slowing down a little bit because of the uh, consumer confidence and also the consumption. People are spending less frequent on the luxury product. On the other hand, some brands are increasing their penetration uh, on e-commerce because in the past, some of the e-commerce uh, uh, some of the luxury brands, they have low penetration uh, on online business, mainly focus on offline. With those brands start to move some of their business online, we still see the luxury has opportunity for Baldwin to capture. Okay, Alicia? Thank you, Arthur. Yes, thank, thank you, Arthur. You. Thank you. Thank you. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Wendy Sun for closing remarks. Thank you, Operator. On behalf of the Bowser Management Team, we would like to thank you again for your participation in today's call. If you require any further information, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you for joining us today. This concludes the call. Thank you. The conference has now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect.